Today I'm going to share with you the top books that will increase your manliness, your masculinity, and help you become more of a man. Now you might be wondering, why would I want to do this? Well, it turns out that many people wake up one day and they realize, hey, I'm getting pretty old and I still suck with women. Maybe you have a girlfriend or a life partner and you have all sorts of chaotic problems in that relationship. Or you can't even make male friends or you're having a tough time making male friends or you're having a tough time getting any, any dates. These are all problems, some of the top problems associated with a lack of direction on central fundamental character traits of a man. Now there's a lot of reasons why the modern world has caused many men to stop being manly and one of them is the fact that there's no longer a standard male rite of passage like there used to be for many tribes. If you look at the Native Americans or Africans, there was a specific point in their lives, whether it's you know the Jewish people with the bat, bat mitzvah, uh, they have a standard way of uh, a rite of passage to really teach a man how to be a man and what it means to be a man. Add that on top of very metrosexual cultural role models these days, plus the fact that there's uh, gender equality being pushed and you get situations where you're a nice guy. This is definitely me. I'm very, you're a very passive, almost spineless guy who uh, you know, does everything for others and never does anything for yourself. This causes a lot of issues uh, that are central to being a male and some extremist feminists may uh, maybe you know disagreeing but uh, this is something that's a huge problem and it causes a lot of problems where you can't even have a normal family or normal relationships with people. So the first book I recommend is called The Way of Men by Jack Donovan. Now, there are a lot of books about man, uh, manliness and masculinity out there, but this one consistently tops the list. Everyone who reads it, uh, most of them usually give huge raving reviews on the book. And it's really a book about what you need to do, what is a man, why a man is how he is, why they care about tribes, culture, violence, all these different things and how to get going. So I'm not going to spoil the book, but the one big takeaway from it that I got was that you have to surround yourself with tribes of other men. If you lack this or you had a uh, no tribes of men growing up, this may be a key cause for why you didn't know how to model men and how to really get going uh, on being a man. Number two, the second thing that you should do if you want to be a better man is to read the book The Way of the Superior Man by David Dida. I know, I know, the name is almost identical, but it's actually a different book. Now this book, I personally didn't like, but it has been getting a lot of rave reviews. It's uh, considered a classic by many, many people. And although it has a similar name, it's quite different. The author, uh, the, and here's why I didn't like the book. He really just, seemed, it seemed like to, he was giving his own opinion on the book throughout the book. There's no real scientific evidence to support anything he said. And I feel like that's a big problem because honestly, like how can I even trust you if you're just like saying this stuff? However, this guy does seem to be a pretty manly man or at least manly enough to really consider his advice. The third book, and this one is my favorite and I think one of the most effective books out of any book I would list. Um, and there's a close second to it. But this one is called No More Mr. Nice Guy by Dr. Glover. This one is probably the most pivotal book. I'm a member of a Facebook group called The Order of Men. And uh, it's Order of Man, singular actually. And in that group, uh, I posted about this book. And since then, the book's just constantly being talked about. It almost every week someone gives a rave review about the book and there's a reason for that. This book covers all the different possible traits and reasons and derivatives for why we are spineless nice guys in a way. Why, where we do everything for other people and we never do anything selfishly for ourselves for a whole day or a full week and how some of these traits and many others like it really drive huge obstacles 
in preventing us from being assertive creatures and actually uh, living lives that are attractive to other women and actually living a life where you can sustainably do well in business in your career as well as with other friends so it's such a great book and I wish I could spend an hour talking about it because it's so much more than just nice guy it goes into all these different categories and psychological reasons and how to fix them on uh, on all the traits that uh, men lack these days now I want to move on to number four this book is a close second uh, and it is called What Women Want. It's by two authors. One is called Doc, one, one's uh, Dr. Geoffrey Miller, and the other is Tucker Max. Now, there's one specific chapter in this book that I recommend you reading if you don't read any other chapters in this book. And this is the most important chapter in the book. It is the chapter on the tender defender. Now, this book is unique in that it backs up everything it says with extensive science uh, and decades of. Uh, research in evolutionary biology to kind of really thoroughly explain what makes a attractive men and why these traits are attractive to women on a survival and reproduction level. But there's this one chapter in this book that really thoroughly addresses and explains the whole myths and misconceptions about the nice guy versus the other end of the spectrum, the asshole. And the truth is that neither one of these extremes are the most attractive to women. In reality, and again, No More Mr. Nice Guy covers this in detail, the nice guy usually isn't even that nice. They usually just think they're nice. In reality, they are just, what's categorized as the nice guy is someone who's so spineless that they don't assert themselves and defend themselves and stand up for them and their friends or their partner when they really need to. Others call it a spineless doormat, but you get the point. The asshole, of course, is oftentimes too assertive, getting worked up and crazy over the slightest thing, like a waiter spilling water on you. So somewhere in the middle, and this goes to the concept they coined called the tender defender, where you're friendly and kind, but also uh, control, able to control the situation and be assertive enough when the time comes is really important. And there's a certain balance to it. They call it the 90%, 10%, where you only have to be assertive 10% of the time, but the right 10%. It's really a new revolutionary way of ex explaining why we kind of screw up in what we do. And the fifth and final book that I recommend, and this one is quite new, and it was released just a couple years ago, uh, it is by Dr. Kalakowski, and the name of the book is uh, something like, uh, I can't remember the exact name, but it's something like Shy, Socially Anxious, and Searching for Love. If you just search Dr. Kalakowski book, you'll find it. Plus, I'll leave a link in the description to that book if you really want. Anyhow, the point of this book, summarized in like 10 seconds here for you, is that it goes so much beyond just a dating advice guide for shy people. This book actually thoroughly covers numerous areas of uh, why we are so psychologically uh, barricaded or affected and what's stopping us from becoming masculine, normal men. And it goes into many different categories. It dives into the psychology of it. It's very similar to No More Mr. Nice Guy. And it even has a lot of case studies of real people just like No More Mr. Nice Guy. But in, in this sense, it dives more into the, the areas of so, social anxious behavior, shyness, and fear, and, and why those manifest and why they're so strong and dangerous and why it's so tough for us to get over these. And I think this is really great for anyone who has tried and failed at that uh, standard dating or pickup artist advice where it's just like, you just have to brute force it. Just man up and get rejected a thousand times by a thousand girls and then you'll get better. In fact, that may be more traumatizing than helpful for most men. So. That's an incredible book too. I'm very, very uh, surprised and proud of how thorough they cover the topic in very subtle, deep ways on a science front, not just you know random advice from a random person. So those are the top five books in my opinion. There are actually like 50 books out there on the theme of masculinity 
and I've Googled it, I've researched it. But those other books, I really just don't think, just from what I've seen and the summaries of them, they really don't have the appeal or the impact that I feel like these top five I recommended do. So check them out. Thanks for watching this whole video. Smack that like button. I'm, going to, I'm starting to sound like a YouTuber, which I am, but uh, let's not do that. Hit the subscribe button. Okay, that's enough. And I'll see you in the next video. Subscribe.